many years ago with pins and prolac let us both to war. So we could fight the Easterners at Penzig number four. We marked on in <coughs> knife and mace and shortened axe and sword. The Eastern Tigers did, and that's how we won the war. <laughs> Cause you can't swing a broadsword when you're in the forest. The Eastern fighters learn to their dismay. No, you can't swing a broadsword when you're in the forest. The extra steel keeps getting in your way. Merrill Waldy let the Harriers out to sneak and strike and run, and to knock off Crown Prince Angus and to have a lot of fun. Time for a foot. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and if you go down to the history hall, you can see photos of all of these people. <laughs> Duke Sir Merrill de Silvia Stop. Then known simply as Bozo the Count. <laughs> because of his cherubic nimbus of bright red hair, <laughs> resembling a current, you know, a, a now current TV clown. Uh, closed and met with Angus Duke, Sir Angus, Angus the Black, who in an age of Freon tank helmets, almost across the board, somehow had a beautifully made pig-faced bassinet. Now, for those of you who are not students of Armony, imagine sort of a heavy metal woody woodpecker. <laughs> Long, uh, pointy, snooty kind of helmet. Merrill recreated true medieval history by smiting Angus a mighty smote <laughs> on the snoot. <laughs> it was a mighty snoot smote. <laughs> and rocking him back with such momentum and force that he bounced off a tree, lost his balance, and went face first into about six inches of polyunsaturated yuck. <laughs> With such adhesion and such depth that it required the efforts of two early squires to get him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, knock off Crown Prince Angus and I had a lot of fun. They laid their ambush cunningly so they could win the day. Then they turned around and found the Eastern army in their way. You can't swing a broadsword when you're in the forest, not even when it's planned as a surprise. No, you can't swing a broadsword when you're in the forest, and an ambush, ambush is very nice. Father Odin raged and thundered down all through that grim campaign, and showered lightning bolts around and poured eternal rage. We were getting lightning strikes within sight of the camp. <laughs> It was exciting. <laughs> and let me tell you, chain mail does not make a Faraday cage. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> we thought it quite inspiring as we slogged through bog and fen. Then we saw a soggy cinder where the sergeant should have been. You can't swing a rod, sir, when you're in the forest, especially when you see the lightning spark. No, you can't swing a broadsword when you're in the forest unless you feel like glowing after dark. <sighs> we met the eastern tigers drawn up out there in the mud. We closed with them and fought it out and turned it red with blood. Oh, the fighting, it was vicious as we closed in hand to hand. And then we hit the beehive and the corpses jumped and ran. <laughs> don't have a footnote anywhere else. <laughs> this is the spot. Someone, somehow, somewhere, kicked, hit, sat on, bumped up against, or otherwise royally urinated off. <laughs> a hive full of something. Yellow jackets, wasps, hornets, bees, flying velociraptors. I don't know. <laughs> but suddenly they were everywhere. Now, I got one or two up a, a gambas on sleep. You know, when 20 guys are trying to hit you with sticks, you don't notice it. You know, it's, it's, I found out later. Uh, however, and I hesitate to say this because some of the personnel are now present. <laughs> a man now highly regarded as a knight and a duke. A paragon, a pioneer of armoring in the SCA who was wearing a beautiful, wonderful helmet with a bassinet that clamped underneath. 
got a couple of them in his eye slots. We saw him doing a dance. Beating the anvil chorus on this beautiful gothic helmet. An equally beautiful pair of gothic helmets. Spoiler alert, he was not stopped. Scampering away up there. However, he was not as fortunate as another much younger mid -realm fighter who later became a knight and who, out of courtesy to his dignity, we shall not mention, <laughs> Sir Coley Cuthbert, <laughs> got a couple of these little hummers where no gentleman should ever want to entertain. He did not fare as well. <coughs> he was last seen sort of staggering up the trail to camp, on tiptoes, <laughs> feet spread out, knees together, clutching his nether regions. I believe he was praying because he mentioned the name of our Savior frequently. <laughs> <laughs> you can't swing a sword when you're in the forest, when your copy stinks and swells and turns bright red. You can't swing a broad sword when you're in the forest, the buzzing is be coming from your head. We met the eastern tiger out there in the mud and damp. We could find the eastern tiger. We couldn't find the camp. <laughs> it was a big woods, okay? We got lost. <laughs> we finally found our way back, and the final figure stinks. Middle Kingdom 3, East 2, and Mother Nature 48. Cause you can't swing about, sir, when you're in the forest. I'm tired of fighting while the rain pours down. You can't swing a broad sword when you're in the forest. I don't like steel, but I don't want to drown. No, you can't swing a broad sword when you're in the forest. Jump like a fish, jump like a porpoise, roll in the mud and pensive port with porpoise. Forty years, it still doesn't work. <laughs> you can't swing a broad sword when you're in the forest. I have been stung, I have been stung. Oh, goodness gracious, I have been stung. <laughs> you can't swing a broad sword when you're in the forest. Forest, listen, you got a pair of dry socks there, I got a fifty dollar bill, you can make a deal! You can't swing a broad sword when you're in the forest, I don't mind steel, but I don't want to drown. 